Hey everybody, yeah, about seven months ago I posted my review on these Broadway Limited E1, EA, EB units and they were Baltimore and Ohio, ones I've been really looking forward to getting and there were some faults I found with them but the one that really irritated me the most was the wretched sound. There's just something crackly and poppy about the sound and it actually hurt my ears to listen to it after a while. Uh, several people actually agreed. They didn't like the sound in theirs either, so I thought to myself, well, like, I can't live with these like this. I've got to do something about it. And finally, I got around to doing that. I'm going to share my results with you today. On top of it, I had this Riverossi uh, Consist. I don't particularly care for it, though. So I'm going to try to find a different Consist to go along with it. So I appreciate you joining me for this update, and I hope you find something useful in it. Please let me know what you think, and we'll be right back, and we'll get this started. Hang on a second. Today's episode is brought to you by Rolltru Scale Models, in particular Rolltru's line of precision-made HO scale wheels. Rolltru's precision wheels are made out of turned brass, each one turned individually and then blackened. This allows for the truest rolling wheel and the smoothest rolling wheel. Currently these wheels come in American Freight sizes, that's 33 inch wheels, and they come in both short and long axle and they also come in IHC, AHM, and River Rossery replacement sizes. That includes the incredibly small pizza cutter wheels and the standard plastic wheels. Remember Roll True for the truest rolling wheels. My primary complaint about this from the beginning was the sound, and if you can't hear it, good for you, but there is a rattling and popping and clipping to this that I just don't know how anybody can take, to be quite honest with you. I watched reviews of this and other EAEB sets and they all sound the same. It's just this horrible rattling and blah, I, I just couldn't, yeah, it was really bad, and I called it wretched. And some people didn't seem to like that, but trying to be as honest as I can, and when you have a model that actually hurts my ear canal, yeah. One of the more interesting comments about that video was from Tom Atkinson. He said, okay, it was a nice review, but dude, what do you want for $235? I mean, nothing is perfect, and listen, it's not real. Well, if, even for a measly $235, at least it could sound somewhat decent and not rupture my eardrums. And as far as it not being real, <laughs> that's not what my wife thought. So as you can see, you could fit an EA unit inside of your house comfortably. What are you doing? Hey, hon, you're home early. I'm doing some filming. The neighbors called and said a truck crashed into the oh, house. Is that a train uh, in my living yeah, room? Yeah, no, it, uh, it's right in here. I was really surprised. When you said you were thinking of buying a train, um, I thought you were joking. Well, okay, so what I didn't realize is you don't actually need track to run a locomotive. You, you can actually just... Is it leaking on the carpet? It, How much uh, did that cost? Like 240 something dollars. 240 and it will uh, cost to fix the yeah. house? 240 is yeah, like yeah, half a week's crazy. groceries. <laughs> And it's leaking it oil um, all over my yeah, carpet. No, you don't have to worry. It's... It's not real. It's, it's like this guy on the internet told me it's, it's not real. It's real. It's destroyed my house. Um, get get, get well, out of my house okay, and get well, yourself out of my house. No one in their right mind would bring a train into the house. I don't know what you're thinking. This is over and over. I'm just so tired. Get out of my living room.
And as altruistically helpful as Tom was trying to be, his theory just didn't pan out. I need to find some way to at least make this sound acceptable. There was another post from a guy or someone named Skip Global, and he said that he spoke to BLI Tech Support, and they said to remove the metal screen installed underneath both of the speakers. He did so, and the crackling rattling is now gone. Well, okay. That, I didn't even know those were under there. Why they would put the metal screens on, I'm not entirely sure, but let's give that a try. Unlike somebody who may or may not be named Frank, I'm actually willing to take some recommendations and give something a try, so let's do that. This shell is a simple pry and pull, and it's easier to do this on the B unit since there's no lighting, so there's nothing attached. And is these the metal screens that Skip Global was talking about? All right, well, I don't, hmm, those really aren't under the speaker. Now, this is a bad design because in reality, um, the enclosures should be completely closed off, and those grates actually have air moving through them. So this design already is problematic, but I'm not going to try to make this perfect right now. I just want this to be something I can listen to without my eardrum blowing out. So let's take off the retaining bar, pull the speaker, and do I have to like rip this little grate off of the top of here? That's actually, ew. Oh my goodness, Skip Global is right. There is a little screen. Why would they do that? There's a little screen under there. Only mackerel is right. Wow, what do you know? I don't know why they did that. All right, I mean, this is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as I was saying, let's try the front one. Is there a little screen under there too? So as I was saying, you actually want to have an enclosed airspace behind the speaker. Oh, you look at that. There's a little, yeah, it's like a little screen door screen behind there. How bizarre. I'm not even quite sure what that's supposed to do. I mean, it's not like you can poke your finger up in there and rupture the speaker cone. That's really bizarre. You know what? So this doesn't rattle around. I'm just going to put the tape over the other one. Then I'll go ahead and clamp this one down, and that way I'm not going to get kind of a false rattle. The, the rear one might need this, this retaining bar, but the front one probably doesn't. For the moment of truth, let's go ahead and put this on the track and get some power going into it. Oh my goodness, he's actually right. It stopped the rattling and popping. Unbelievable. Simple fix. He's absolutely right. Well done, God. That's, uh, that's great. The sound lacks depth overall still, and again, that's because, you know, the uh, it should be a closed area above the speaker. Um, and so I can fix that by making my own speaker enclosures, there's no doubt. But at least initially, and what I cared about most was just getting rid of that horrific, horrific rattling. Um, boy, he's absolutely right. Well, Skip Global, I don't know who you are, but and I don't drink, but I'd be happy to buy you a drink of your choice because that was that was a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be and one of these days I may go ahead and make speaker enclosures for this and I'll make them sound even better and somebody had a recommendation to have to purchase certain speaker enclosures they'd blow my mind mine are actually better um, because I take a lot of time to design mine and um, acoustics are somewhat of a secondary hobby for me Let's see if putting the um, top back on helps. Maybe that'll help a little bit here.
wow, this is actually tolerable now. That's wonderful. I mean, it's now it's about to where I expect Broadway Limited to sound. Underwhelming with mediocre acoustics, but at least it isn't horrific now. At least this isn't wretched now. It's, this is something I can actually live with. I was considering completely switching out the decoder or just simply moving these on and switching to E8s, E8 Protos, but nah, this... Uh, this is gonna work. Let's go ahead and do the front one. Let's go ahead and do the A unit. This is the exact same procedure. It's just you have to be a little bit careful with this front one. You have to kind of lift up the, uh, the actual cab working space here. And yeah, there that thing is, bizarre. I mean, when you talk about the road to hell being paved with good intentions, I don't know if it's quite that severe, but it was pretty hellish listening to this thing. And I'm like, cow, I just, uh, Boy, there must have been some good intention behind putting this thing in there, but, hmm, I don't know. Well, let's go ahead and put this back together and get this front one on the track and give it a go as well. Let's see how it works. Well, there you have it. This is something that I can actually listen to and work with now on the layout. I've been completely avoiding it and I've had a lot of other things built up in front of this, so I haven't taken the time to just pull these apart and pull the screens. Of course, I kind of scratched my head again. I'm like, I'm not sure what he's talking about, but I'm certainly gonna give it a try and I'm glad I did. Gracious, I thought I was gonna be here all day, do like a 50 minute video, help you with this, but yeah, we just pull the screens out. Okay, well, in order to improve on the consist, I started picking up these things. And I finally decided that out of all of them, I kind of like this corrugated slash painted look. I, I decided it's kind of, I don't have anything like this. I, when they're corrugated, they're all corrugated. And when they're painted, they're all painted. So I thought this would look pretty nifty. I fully understand that Baltimore and Ohio mixed and matched these cars on a consist. So there wouldn't be the, this kind of consistency, but if you have been paying attention to my channel at all, you know I just don't care about those things. So I decided to do all of these in this style. In fact, sometimes I had to buy these with the other cars that were in the set. Ah, yeah, there we go. Um, so I had to buy the other ones in this and I didn't want that, you know, so I had to buy like the Dupex sleeper and it was all corrugated, but I didn't want it. So I moved that on and just kept these these are the ones that i kept they all look like this now i first i kind of collected them piecemeal and slowly as i could so i may have duplicates in here i really don't know it's not like every time i see one cheap i want to run downstairs or if i'm on a train show i can't run downstairs to see which ones i have so i just pick them up as i could and that's and so we're gonna have to see so <laughs> This is literally the first time these have all been in one place, honestly, as I'm pulling them out now. So um, yeah, let's see what we got. In fact, when I was learning more about these, I watched YouTube and I saw this, I guess these from a promo video on YouTube from Walther's and well, they had just all kinds of cars mixed and matched in there. And I don't know, it, it looked nice. And what's funny is, I again, I bought some of these and I had to actually buy them as a set. Some of these as kind of a set and I actually sold some of the other B&O cars to this guy locally and he seemed to be happy to get them and he was creating a prototypical consist where I wanted one that just looked the same throughout. Okay, I did have a duplicate in there. Not gonna worry about it. I, I, those are decaled on there anyway, right? I guess if I wanted to take it off and put on a different name, I could do that, but I really don't care. Here's like the Wow, the actual dining car, dining car. It's pretty nice, two-tone plastic. I like it. I think only one of these is lit, but Walter's cars are really easy to light. So I'll probably do that. 
And I do want to learn more about these cars. This is the kitchen dormitory. I get the kitchen, but I don't get the dormitory part. I, I guess they actually slept on here. I don't know. If you know, please tell me down in the comments. That'll save me some looking up. Just don't put a lot of time into figuring out what each of these cars did. But I want to, and I eventually will. All right, so this, I think, is the awesome car. I actually got pretty happy to find this for less than $100. It seems like these are going for pretty decent money. The Capital Limited Observation Car looks really keen. I think this is the reason why I went with this fluted side because of this. I wanted them to all look like this. Look at that, actually. Three-tone plastic. Very nice. White tables, silver tables, smaller tables there in the center. I like this a whole heck of a lot. And eventually I'll get people in here. I'll get it lighted and I'll get the actual rear lighted as well. I'm happy that this is just a listenable to consist now and I, yeah, but I probably will take the time to design my own speaker enclosures for these. I think I can make it sound even better, but like I said, the goal here today was just at least getting this to some sort of acceptable level. And I think I've accomplished that with the help of Skip Global. And it's interesting to learn what some model railroaders think. Apparently, for 230 plus dollars, you shouldn't expect very much. You should be happy to live with a rattly and harsh sounding locomotive. Now, I have some that cost less than $150 and frankly, they, they sound a lot better, but who knows, I guess $280 is now what you want if you want something that sounds halfway decent, at least according to some model railroaders. But, it was a very easy and cheap fix, and I was really thankful for that. Didn't have to really do much. I could really just take this in and like it, and I think now, now that it finally sounds good, I've pulled out these cars, and I'm really very, very happy with this train. Very happy with this train. I think it looks great, and it doesn't sound great necessarily, but it sounds a lot better and it, it sounds acceptable. So I'm okay with that. That was the goal. So tell me what you think. Do you like the fix? Is it something that you're going to do if you have one of these? Do you agree that for $235, you should expect a totally junky sounding train? I guess 235 will go with that. As always, appreciate you watching. I really enjoy that you're here. Thanks a bunch. And uh, if you wanna help me out, yeah, or if this helped you out and you're willing to reciprocate, please click the like button and subscribe button with the bell. That really helps me out. And again, leave a comment. I'm curious as to what you think about all of this. And if you want to help me pay the bills, please consider purchasing something from one of the links in my description. Until next time, hey, happy model railroading. Take care, stay safe. And again, thank you so much for being here. Talk to you later. See you soon.